Well, we've come to do something totally different this month and it's the first of our Irish stalking films. This is a one-off film and we're actually doing it for Highland Outdoors and more specifically Ridgeline Clothing. And Ridgeline is a clothing brand that's been around for a long time and it's, to be honest, it's not a brand I ever had much time for. I bought one of the old smocks probably 10 years ago and found it very sweaty. But I had a couple of beers with Nigel Winkle from Highland and he's the brand manager for Ridgeline. And he convinced me that their new membranes and their new kit was, was up to the task. So we've agreed to do a, a two day film, an overnight backpack hunt, high activity hunt in the Wicklow Mountains. And the forecast is due to throw all sorts of weather at us. So it's gonna be a good test for this gear. I've brought my buddy Will with me, who hunts with me a lot. And he's a real gear expert and is really into his really into his technical gear. So he's come along just to give a uber critical eye to this new Ridgeline stuff and we'll see how it performs. <laughs> Oh, fresh breath in the tent tonight, J.O. Yeah. Can you scrub your feet with them as well? Yeah. Will and I love embarking on these overnight hunting trips and regularly use them as preparation for multi-day wilderness hunts or, as in this case, to test new clothing and equipment. Morale is high as we leave the vehicle. Fueled by an appetite for adventure and energy bars, we take to the mountain. Will leading the way at a fast pace, and it's not long before we have deer spotted. We've seen um, a few stags up here in the skyline, uh, just, just short of the skyline. So a couple of them bedded, a couple of them feeding. Um, so we'll poke up here. Uh, wind is pretty good, we'll be just cutting the wind and um, have a look, see. See what they're at, see what's in it, see if there's anything shootable. So the, um, the animals we saw when we were coming up the mountain over this direction, but as we've come up the hill, the wind is being contoured around um, the local wind and it's kind of blowing towards them a little bit. But fortunately enough, we spotted a bedded stag down here. There's actually two animals down there. Uh, the wind is good, range is about 400 yards from here. So if we can uh, we drop the packs here and chance a stalk down there and see see what's what. Uh, looks like a nice cold stag to me, so um, yeah, let's give it a go. One of the stags on the lookout for danger, I decide to stay behind with the camera and allow Will to close the gap on his own. The terrain is far from ideal here and the chances of a shot are slight, but we are trying to make the most of every opportunity. Unfortunately, this time it's not to be. Are you crawling? No backstop? Normal. <coughs> yeah, I had no... I had to get too close to them to get a backstop, but I ended up drifting down right and getting in directly in line with them, which isn't really what I wanted to do. And then I was too close to them by the time, like I could see their heads, but I was standing in like uh, a trench and just skyline behind them, or well, that mountain in the background. But um, Nice little stock though. Yeah, I was in pretty close to them there. But it's, it's noisy down there too, and that's why I didn't wear the waterproof jacket I wore that. And it's, I'm still dry under it. So that's just a little wind stopper, and I was crawling, you know, so it was ideal for that. But um, yeah, they weren't, uh, they weren't on for a close encounter with O'Mara today. <laughs> Energised by this early encounter, Will sets off again in search of new quarry. 
Unfortunately for him, keeping one's eyes peeled for deer and not on the ground in front can have hilarious consequences. Another group is soon located and after layering up the counter to rapidly dropping temperatures, Will makes a plan. The route to these deer offers very little cover for an approach, so again I elect to remain behind while Will crawls forward and into range. Unfortunately, with stalker and cameraman separated, the lines of communication are broken and Will takes a deer just as they move out of my view. So I was able to stalk down this key gully here. These animals were on their tippy toes. I mean, they were, you know, they were going somewhere. They weren't really hanging around. But at the same time, I had opportunity. They didn't pick my movement up. I came down and I set up uh, my uh, shooting position here. So I pushed my bipods out in front of this hump to give me the benefit of, of this as well for stability. And... Uh, <coughs> I had my scope on 12 power and full power and just put one in the breech, picked out an animal and um, yeah, perfect saw the strike on the animal, uh, track the animal and I have it marked here just by a particular bit of yellow uh, grass just down here. So uh, yeah, an exciting little stock. Um, I think Jason may have missed the, the, the action, uh, but yeah, it was a pure heart and lung shot. Um, so... Uh, yeah, happy days. Now, time is against us. It's uh, nearly 10 past four to get down, pick this animal, and then find somewhere to set up our camp for the night. So, empty chamber. So, we're heading for a little distinct yellow patch down here, and um, fighting daylight so let's make a move so we've uh, marked this spot we're going to leave that little uh, it there for tonight it's going to drop below zero and um, we have the heart so we can brew that up with our couscous extravaganza right try and find somewhere to pitch a tent so on these little adventures i always have the great idea that we'll establish camp early and then we'll hunt out from it never happens always end up setting up in the dark so once again uh, we probably came down through some of the steepest part of the mountain but we have running water here close by uh, this is as flat as it gets pretty much and it's just a case of rolling little one man bivy so it's a case of find a body length of ground that's flat and get into it so um, yeah this is it camp ridge line temperatures dropped really really fast it's already below zero um, we found a real nice little sheltered bowl in the mountain out of the wind but it's forecast for some pretty heavy wind and some rain tonight so we've got a deer will had a cracking shot um, unfortunately i just missed out on on capturing it and um, had a really unlucky evening we had probably four stalks that just didn't work out just missing that little few percent of luck that make the difference to 
to a successful stock and that but really good evening on the hill we put in some some miles this evening will was going like a train and it was actually a, a really good test of of this ridgeline stuff and i just had a windproof uh, hooded shirt on um a merino wool base layer under that but yeah when we were moving hard um i was comfortable i was warm it wasn't too warm and then when the temperature started to drop just stuck on the monsoon lead over the top and just gave that little bit of extra protection against the wind and the cold and yeah we're still wearing that but the the star of the show today for me has been these pintail pants because waterproof trousers I usually find very sweaty and I've more or less given up wearing waterproof trousers I'm happier in a more breathable soft shell but we've been moving pretty fast in these and yeah really nice comfortable breathable and I'm actually going to sleep in them tonight I'm perfectly dry and warm and comfortable in these and I'm going to keep them on for the night but yeah we're going to grab some grub now and hopefully the weather won't be too bad in the morning uh, rain we can deal with but if we're fogged out here it'll be a little bit of an issue and hopefully I'll get an opportunity to, to have a go in the morning Well that has been a pretty wild night in the tent it literally hammered down rain all night but one good thing about camping at this time of year is Lots of time to catch up on sleep. We got into bed yesterday evening at about seven o'clock, and um, it's half past six now. And it won't be bright for another hour and a half. But we're oh, we're going to get up. We're going to get up now and break camp and try and pack everything away in the train and hunt our way back towards the car. The car is just over eight kilometres away. So we came in a good distance yesterday and hopefully we'll, we'll catch up with some more animals on the way back but I have my doubts in this weather and um, we'll see what it's like when we get outside but we're up pretty high and I reckon that we could have a, a lot of fog and a lot of cloud here but if we can get underneath it we'll, we'll hunt our way back to the car and hopefully catch up with something. But unfortunately, as you can see, that mist has just come right down. Visibility is down to 50, 60 yards of actual clear visibility. We can see the skyline about 200 yards away, but it's just going to make conditions basically impossible to hunt on an area like this where there's not a high density of animals. You need to be really seeing them at, well, as far as the binoculars will allow you. So we'll just keep mooching back towards the car and if it lifts, it lifts. If it doesn't, I'm afraid we'll have to knock it on the head. There's no point in plunging about here all day in the mist and get lost. So we were just chatting about navigation there and uh, as we're walking back towards the car, the visibility, as Jay said, is down to zero, really. So it's uh, situations like this when you're on the mountain that you need to kind of have some backup plan. It's very easy to follow a stream, walk back to the road, have a kind of safety bearing. Um, a little compass is a great addition that if you know there's a linear road runs south of your uh, hunting area you can just set your compass to south and walk that way or follow a stream downhill whatever it is to a road or and that but uh, little handy tools I use for pinpointing things like um, your bivy or campsite location uh, say we left that animal there last night how to mark that I use an app on my phone called uh, view ranger so the GPS in your phone will work even when you don't have a uh, signal. So you can turn it on airplane mode even to save the battery and you still have your GPS. I always had a GPS and until it died and I started researching what to replace it with, did I really kind of start exploring the utility of the phone. And um, the limitation of the phone is battery life. So I have a little uh, Gold Zero battery pack. It's the size of a shotgun cartridge and I carry that in my pack with a little lead all the time for a backup. So that's my phone as a primary. And that's great because it gives you a visual map of, um, 
of where you are, it'll give you a northern survey map, I have a 1 is to 30,000 map, and you can pinpoint locations, which is fantastic. And then I also have, um, in my watch I have a GPS, it's, this is a, a Sunto Traverse Alpha, and how I do that is you just simply, with the one touch of a button, you press that, save location, and it, swipe all the deer stuff out of it, it um, that'll save your location as a point of interest or whatever you want. Um, so there you have a backup and you have your primary which also has a backup with battery life in that. And I've been using the phone and view ranger for three years now and it's it's yet to let me down. It's super accurate. And the little watch I've been playing with for about six months and uh, it's super accurate as well. It gives you a very good, almost like a compass uh, when you're getting to, uh, when you're navigating to a point of interest. So having said all that, let's hope we don't get lost on our way back to the car. We decide to only take the usable meat from this carcass, saving weight and bulk in our packs. Field butchering like this also benefits wildlife who may be struggling to find a decent meal at this time of year. So we've only a couple of hundred yards back to the truck and fog lifted very briefly on the hunt back. And we did actually see a couple of deer, but we'd already spooked them as we were marching along in the fog. But it's it's right down thick now. You can just barely see the car in the distance. And um, no, but it's been good. It's lashed rain a lot of the way back. Stayed dry and comfortable. It's quite a lot warmer today than it was yesterday. It's up around eight, 10 degrees. So it's good comparison to yesterday evening when it got down below zero. Um, but the gear has worked, worked really well. I'm very, very comfortable. We'll, we'll have a look now when we get back. Quite often a backpack will press some moisture through, a, through any jacket that is breathable. But we'll get a look when we get back, see how wet we are and see what the gear is like inside. But just myself, I feel really comfortable. You don't know you're wearing the stuff, it fits nicely. And um, it's been a, been a pleasure to hunt in. Mission complete. Job done. Yeah, happy days. Open up the jacket, give us a look, see you dry. I have nothing on underneath this, Jason, you know that. <laughs> Go on, dry. What about the back, where your pack was? Yeah. Dry? Go on, dry, yeah. If you want to find out more about Ridgeline, go to ridgelineclothing.co.uk